Hello. In the statistical analysis of reservoir data, understanding permeability and heterogeneity in an isotropy are core elements. My name is Patrick Corbett and I've been working as a reservoir geologist, petrophysicist and reservoir engineer with these issues for many years. The understanding of core with respect to key petrophysical issues is vital at the outset of any reservoir characterization study. These issues are not simple and in this short element of my course has been prepared in order to help the student work their way through this. Look at any course lab, like this example of a course lab, they are really as uniform as this particular example. The accompanying image shows five meters of slabbed core, five one meter sections. The core is approximately 10 centimeters or four inches wide. The core has been slabbed, and after the core plugs have been taken, their locations are obvious. The circular holes, partial holes, and sometimes vertical holes. It is almost certainly going to be heterogeneous, like this example. This time there are four slabs. The top of the core is on the left-hand side, the bottom of the core is on the right-hand side. In reservoir characterization for building geological reservoir models, there are two properties that we need to consider, heterogeneity and anisotropy. Heterogeneity is permeability different at various locations. Anisotropy is permeability different in different directions. Permeability is a vector. Porosity is a scalar and has no direction. In this heterogeneous core section of 5 metres, many of the key issues are plain to see. The well and core are not necessarily vertical, so bedding surfaces could be dipping, or the well could be vertical but the beds are dipping. The horizontal plugs are in one horizontal orientation and the core is slabbed in the direction of maximum dip. So plug locations are usually circular holes of one or one and a half inches diameter. Vertical plugs tend to be further apart, taken normal to lamination. If taken at all, they're perhaps at a meter spacing when horizontal plugs might be at 25 centimeters, 30 centimeters or one foot. Local lamination can be cross-bedded, so there are two horizontal plugs directions, X and Y. The horizontal plugs are not always at a regular spacing. In this case, the loose sand intervals could not be sampled, and this introduces bias against the best reservoir zones. The cemented plugs are not necessarily good at predicting the sand production problems that was uh, the problem in this particular reservoir. Faults and fractures are usually avoided when it comes to core plugging. Core plugs in a horizontal well. This slab is shown in white light and ultraviolet light. And under ultraviolet light, oil fluoresces. And in this example, you can clearly see that the horizontal well is intersecting more faults and fractures. To explain some of these issues in class, I like to use a simple cardboard box and a cardboard elephant. So this is my cardboard box, and this is my elephant. In a single layer, one or one and a half inch core plugs can be cut in any orientation. Horizontal in X and in Y, and vertical in Z direction. Ideally, a reservoir would be made up of the same thickness layers, and you would sample each layer. Because the layers are the same thickness in this case, the horizontal core plugs would have the same weight, and this is one of the basic assumptions of statistical averaging. The samples have equal support volume and spacing. The more different the properties of the layer, here the coarse layer overlies a finer layer, and the flow would be mostly in the upper layer. 
the greater the permeability heterogeneity as measured by the standard deviation, coefficient of variation, Lorentz coefficient or the Dijkstra-Parsons coefficient. Note that the layers in box 1 and box 2 are isotropic and uniform. It is only then in combination that the two layers become heterogeneous and anisotropic. For parallel flow, in layers of constant thickness, the appropriate average to use in the horizontal direction would be the arithmetic average. For layered flow in the vertical direction, in layers of equal thickness, the appropriate average to use is the harmonic average. OK, as we saw previously, the vertical core plug might come from a different part of the formation. They are not usually as closely spaced. And in the presence of thin shales, the elephant in my reservoir, it is very easy just to forget about shales and overestimate the vertical permeability. Vertical permeability estimates are particularly poor at estimating effective vertical permeability. Bed boundaries present problems as the cores invariably break across the partings. So these are always avoided during core plug acquisition. So when the geology is random, the flow horizontally and vertically is equal and estimated by the geometric average. However, extra care needs to be taken in the presence of either continuous or discontinuous shales because they will increase the anisotropy. Note that geology can be both heterogeneous and isotropic. Sometimes reservoir sandstones are cross-bedded. This means that sample volume, location, orientation become much more of an issue. Usually a plugs are taken parallel to the lamination, sometimes with a perpendicular measurement across the lamination. This will give the maximum horizontal permeability. In the horizontal direction, the permeability might be as low as the vertical permeability in the same formation. This is behind the reason we drill horizontal wells in our North Sea Rotligander reservoirs parallel to the paleo wind direction. So we would drill the well parallel to the paleo wind direction and this would maximize the flow horizontally and vertically into the well. In the upper box, flow in this orientation would require the harmonic average in the horizontal direction because we are flowing across the lamination. The formulas and assumptions for averaging are given in your notes and slides. If rocks were simple layers of uniform thickness and orientation, the averaging life would be easy. The averages of permeability are used to upscale to the effective permeability from an interval of rock to a larger volume that we assume is uniform, such as a reservoir simulation grid block, represented on the right of this image, or an interval that we test. Because of the limitations of the data discussed in this short course, we need to consider carefully how to use the data and the right averaging techniques. Note, faults are always avoided when plugging. And this is because the plugs would fall apart if they could actually be cored in the first place. Usually when heavily cemented, but they are then too tight to measure and also thought to be unrepresentative. Fractured reservoirs need special attention beyond the scope of this short module. But students should note that all plots of core data against depth, cross plots, modified Lorentz plots, etc., rarely record the effects of faults and fractures. So, after watching this video, it should be easier for you to understand the difference between permeability heterogeneity, which is variation at a location measured by the coefficient of variation, and anisotropy, which is variation in direction 
measured by the KVKH in rocks, and how difficult these properties are to capture, especially when it comes to the vertical permeability in reservoir characterization. The use of KV at the core plug scale is actually rather limited in practice, so few people bother to collect the data in the first place, without a very good reason to do so. It should also to be clear why we consider KVKH to be a scale-dependent property. Anisotropy, for the reservoir engineers, this is primarily in the vertical to horizontal directions tends to, but not always, increase with scale. And plots like this one from the North Sea might be useful, even if only conceptual. I hope this video helps you understand the notes in the slides, which you should also read and refer to. If you're interested in flow and rocks and you're looking at analogues in the field, I advise you to always consider averaging an anisotropy at whatever scale you're looking at, whether they are layered systems, random systems, or complex dipping systems. Applications of the work described here can impact many issues in reservoir geoscience and engineering, including sampling strategies for core, choosing properties for heterogeneous and anisotropic reservoirs, upscaling permeability anisotropy, estimating effective properties, property modeling, horizontal well planning, reservoir sweep and recovery mechanisms, and ultimately reserve estimations.